Our discussion today is very interesting. If you are below 50, you will feel like it's a waste of time. If you are above 50, it is something you are struggling with somehow or the other. We are talking about parenting adults. In other words, you are in that, it's, what is that word they normally give it? The empty? Yes. Empty nest. You are in the, the, that age called empty nest. And yet, when they do funny things, people claim they are your children. And even if nobody claims, you feel embarrassed. And the devil once in a while visits you and says, did I do it? Right. Am I the one responsible? Let me start right at the beginning. Paul is so clear about the importance of parenting that um, he says, if you are not parenting well, you should not take any leadership in the church. Have you read that one? That's what he told Timothy. Because your first church is not to come to here. Your first church is at home. So if you are not parenting well, the Bible doesn't say you go to hell. It just says you should be so busy in the home, even if they offer you work at church, tell them, sorry, I'm not able, I'm concentrating in my first church before I get to the second church. And that's a biblical requirement. That if something is not right in your own home, please concentrate in prayer and effort to set it right, rather than to ignore it and come to be busy helping other people's children. However, anyway, one of the things I was, uh, the other day I was invited by Sitam and Bakasi uh, on the topic of marriage and remarriage and uh, whatever, which is now a big thing. When you are getting married, you nobody ever heard of something like that. Would you agree with me? Yes. People in their 70s or 80s, would you agree with me? Yes. Yeah, this, this was not heard of, so we did not have. But now, you are meeting everywhere, even some pastors, and they tell you this is my second wife. See. I thought the Bible doesn't allow polygamy. No, 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 it's not polygamy. I had trouble with the first one, so I sent her away. Now I'm with my second one. Somebody called it polygamy serially. You know, traditionally we, we had polygamy concurrently. Now we have evolved to polygamy serially. And I was telling them, if that is your condition, it means there's a problem in your management at home. I'm not saying you are going to hell, but please don't try to lead in the church. First of all, struggle with your own issues. And um, one has to be careful because the word of God is very clear. Any repented sin is forgiven. That's the word of God, isn't it? But the same guy God who has forgiven you is the one saying, if you have a problem at home, concentrate on your home front before you go to the church front. And that's, um, that, that will be something that... Uh, important for us to have at the back of our mind. This is why it's important. However, that's my first point. I wanted you to, to tell you it's a very, we're in a very, very important topic because God has made it so important that he is saying, I have a lot of work in my church, but don't come. First of all, deal with it. But the second point I wanted to tell you is in my understanding of the scriptures, I hear the word of God talking about children. That's why the Bible says in Ephesians, children, obey your parents. parents. But you know, my mother died not too long ago. If she was alive, she would be about 100. I'm in my 70s. The word of God does not ask me to obey her. The, what the word it uses, honor her. Are we together? So that, that means something changed along the way. There was a time I was expected to obey, now I'm expected to honor. And the two words are in the same dictionary. <laughs> the same Bible. They don't mean the same thing. So the first principle I want you to get after my introduction is that when Timothy is being told people who are not managing their children well, it is people with young children, not with adult children. Why? In the same church, you are there 
and you are a grandfather. So your son, who also has a home, is being told to look after his home. Surely you cannot be held accountable for his home. He already has a home. Yeah, so it needs to be understood that you that is parenting adults, you can still minister in the church, even if your son's home is chaotic. It is not your responsibility to organize your son's home, except in prayer. That is something we never end. If you start praying when he is zero year, you know, when he's in the stomach, it's not when you start praying. If you start praying when they're in the womb, but you pray for them until you, hopefully you go before them. Prayer continues. But in terms of, in terms of being held accountable for their home, my understanding is that's not what is expected of us. That does not mean you can ignore what is happening in their home. Because you are their first relative, isn't it? But you cannot, the church can't say, hey, your son is a crook with his wife. The other day I had him beat his wife. I'm stopping you as an elder. You'd have to look for somewhere. It's not in the Bible. You can create a, a church room, but not, not a biblical room. So that's the first thing we must establish. That you are not being held accountable for the homes of your children. If, and when I say homes of your children, it doesn't mean they are married. Even if they are single, they are still running their homes. Am I right? So it needs to be understood very, very clearly. And that is something I need to establish very well. When I, when I go to the scriptures and, um, and, I'm, I'm, and I'm looking at what the scriptures are saying about the accountability issue for each, for each person, the Bible says, when they were living in Egypt, they spent, God did not give them the shortcut to Canaan. He took them through the Red Sea. And then he explained himself. Because I hear, could have taken two weeks or three weeks to arrive in Canaan. But now he takes them through the opposite direction. So he has to explain why. And he says, the reason I took you there is to build your faith. That you have put your trust in me before facing the giants. That's why they were going there. And unfortunately, despite God doing the miracle of people walking on the Red Sea, and when I used to work for Shell, one of the countries I was covering in Sudan, and I still go to, remember going to Port Sudan, and I say, this Red Sea, now I agree with the sea. You can't see across. When you hear the Israel they walk, it was not a river. It was a, that's why they, I think they walk for more than 12 hours. So it's important to understand if the Saturday should have built their faith. But after all that building of their faith, when they reach Kadesh, Kadesh Barnea, the, 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 the spies have come back, told them they are giants there. Caleb just assures them, yeah, they are there, but they are no match for our God. Now, people opted to side with who? The one saying, let us not. We, God cannot be trusted. Can you imagine the anger of God? Having done his work to build their faith, they opted not to trust God. And because they could not trust God, they decided they can't. It was true. They are in their own power. There is no way they could have faced their Canaanites. In God's power, they would have that. Let me tell you what God. God now declared children and not children. Anybody who, for whom the parents were held accountable did not die in the desert. Anybody who, for, who was supposed to be held accountable on his own died in the desert. And the age they set in the book of Exodus is the age of 20. Anybody 20 years and above could work in the military who was regarded as an adult. Anybody below 20 was regarded as a child. And he was supposed to be obeying the parents. So when he did not go to Canaan, it was not him to blame. He was obeying the parents. You know, if a guy was 19 years, 11 months, and 29 days. And he refused to go to Canaan. He still didn't die. Because assumed he is not the one to blame. The parents had to dream. The one who was one man older died in the desert. They went round and round until all of them were dead. God wanted to communicate something clear to us. There is such an age as age of majority. 
where the parents are not held responsible for the sins of their children. Put it the other way around. There is such an age as the age of majority where an adult is held accountable even if it was the parents who told him to go, to refuse to go. Hey, son, you die, don't go. If the son listens to the parent, the parent died for telling him and he died for obeying him. Look at in the picture. And it's a very, very important principle we need to understand in parenting, our parenting adults. And um, my friends that will, 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 will understand that. So it then means you who is here and you are, a, you are a parent, you must change your relationship with your children very clearly. If they are adults, and God will hold them accountable for what they do. It then means you cannot expect them to accept what you tell them without checking with God. Are you getting the point? So, you must change your dealing with your son who is an adult. Earlier you used to instruct him, now you can only <coughs> advise him. And there's a whole difference between advising and instructing. When you give instructions, they must be obeyed. When you give advice, it should only be considered. In other words, when I give advice, you look, it looks like if you sat over there, it would be better. That's what I did. That's called an advice. You are the one who knows how the chair is feeling. If you feel this better, I'm allowing you to continue sitting here. But if I give instructions, hey, ma'am, over there. That's not, you're not supposed to disobey. You're supposed to move. Have you seen the difference? The trouble with us is that in our culture, the word honor is not in our vocabulary. Children, whatever their age, must obey their parents. Even those, are, even those of us in our 70s and our parents are in 90s and 100s, <laughs> when well, they tell you jump, you don't tell them why. You, you, you ask them how high. That's what. And if you dare not obey them, you get a curse. So it's properly policed. <laughs> the police in, in our country is called, if you are from Lula, it's called Chira. <laughs> if, you, if you don't do what the parent says, you, you know the consequences. You will get what is called? Chira. In Kikuyu, you will get Akirumi. I don't know what, I don't know what it is in Kikamba. Kikumo. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> it means, even if you are 70, you have to be very careful how you answer your parents. Because they don't have to get a stake, as long as they are too weak to be with a stake. They just need to move. And you'll be in a lot of trouble. Now, so you need, and that's why this topic is important. Because we need to come to where we as parents accept our biblical responsibility. And our biblical responsibility is to advise our adult children not to distract them. I hope, I, hope, um, I hope the person I'm talking about will not, uh, will not uh, get offended. But I'm dealing with a family where the son told me the, the mother is saying, you can't marry the girl. Both of them are saved. They are both in ministry. The mother is saved. She, she just looked at that girl and said, ah, Haluka, what? You can't marry her. So the boy now asked me to, both of them wanted me to intervene. So I listen to the mother, I listen to the son, and the mother wants to tell me, and you can tell, the spirit shows me. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to tell this friend of mine, and you have been friends, uh, you have been friends for 50 years, uh, you are crossing the line. For him to be wanting to marry is an adult. You don't allow children to marry, is it? Yes. Leave alone that you don't like this one. Even if you are a non-Christian, yes. you still have to, it, it doesn't require your allowance, it just requires your concurrence. Yes. Okay, to the point. So you know he is going to hell, but you have to allow him to go to hell because the decision is his. Only don't join him when he is going to hell. But let him go to hell alone. Before then, you pray for him, you pray with him, but the decision still remains yes. his. But the, the mother could hardly understand. But brother Nana, I thought you were a spiritual man. <laughs> Talk to him. 
So I talked to the boy and said, please show respect to your mother. He says, but tell me from the scriptures. <laughs> Why would I have to drop somebody I love and is born again and you are ministering together? You are going to find something in the Bible. <laughs> so I had to go back again to the mother and persuade her to agree. In other words, I'm not asking her to change her position. She is clearly the wrong woman. But since we are not the one marrying her, marry, just, just allow your son to at peace and please attend the wedding. I don't, need, I don't even know whether she should change for the wedding. <laughs> but that person is not to blame. She had not attended this meeting. Oh. <laughs> it is because the church does not deal with this subject. Am I right? Yes. You know, I must thank you, I must thank you are committed. There are very few places that have discussed this topic. Nobody bothers with it. But it's a very serious topic, isn't it? Because unless you tell parents, since when you don't teach us what the Bible says, we revert to our tradition, isn't it? And since in our tradition, I always obeyed my parents, why are my children not also obeying me? So you, you need, so we are not discussing a, a straight subject. It's a very serious subject. And my prayer is that you understand that 20. By the way, well, I was, well, when he says I was a CU chairman, I was a CU chairman in the university, 75, 76. That time there was only one university in Kenya. So when you are called CU chairman, you didn't, you didn't say, you didn't have to say which university. Unless, of course, you are coming from that. My wife studied in Makere, but he was where Karaji was with me, a little behind me, but together it was in, in the university. And in our time, 18 was not recognized. When I went to university, you are, not, you are a child until 21. So all people tw tw below 21 needed to come to the university with a letter of permission from their parents so that in case there is, a, there is an emergency, the university can take you to hospital and you can go through surgery without having to go to the parents. But me, I was already over 21 by the time I entered first year, so I never came, came with it. Now, but in 1974, Kenyatta wanted young people to be added to the, to the, to the election, it was the elections, and they wanted the young people to, so he moved it to, from 21, which is the British Commonwealth age, down to 18. That's how small boys of 18 call themselves so adults. But the Bible, <laughs> <laughs> the Bible was talking about people who are over 20. Anyway, but the, the, let's not, uh, let, let's not uh, go deep into it. But the point is, it's clear, there's an age you are child, even if they are told you, I'm about a girl I want to marry, you can't ask him what's wrong with you. You say, yeah, yeah, wonderful, when? Because you know he is an, an adult. <laughs> are, are we together? Yes. And that age where you are saying, yeah, yeah, that's good, they are good news. That age is an age for you to keep off your hands. Are we together? Yes. To start understanding, if you truly are a Christian parent, you must not be quoted instructing you. Anything he does in his own home, he can say, my father advised me, but he cannot say, my father instructed me. So he should not be using you to fight his wife. No, but you are ordered. No. Even the wife knows, if they are ordered, they do not come from you. All you give is advice. And I know that because I used to work for Shell and I was a manager. And when I gave instructions, you disobeyed your, them at your own risk. Mm -hmm. I'll, get, I'll, get to, I'll fire you. <laughs> Until after I left Shell, I registered a consultancy firm, which I've been doing for more than 15 years now. And it can be very complicated. The other day I got a, a Kibarua with a, with a, from a, 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 a Somali oil company, and they wanted me to do something in Tanzania. They flew me there, they had, I had a car, moved all over, all over Dar es Salaam, prepared my report, got paid, then after some I wondered, what did they do with my recommendations? So I rang, I rang the Somali guy. I said, hey, how is it going? How is the company? Did you, what did you do with the report? You know what the Muse asked me? Mr. Nana, we forgot to pay you. <laughs> <laughs> I quickly with the truth. And we went to another subject. The message was, the only way a consultant can come supervising whether his recommendations are implemented is if he is not yet paid. Once you are paid, they can share the report, never implemented, it's none of your business. 
Because consultants are device. Consultants, device. Managers, instruct. Are we together? So when you have young children, you manage them. When you have adult children, you advise them. In both cases, you must get involved. The only question is, how do you get involved? And that's really what we really matter. Let me go through a number of verses. Job chapter 30, verse 1 and 2, it says, But now they mock me, men younger than I, whose fathers I would have disdained to put with my sheep dogs. Of whatsoever, of what use was the strength of their hands to me, since their vigor had gone from them. In other words, you reach a level as you grow older, where your children relied on you. Now you need their help. Okay, see the difference? That tells you by the time you need the help of your children, you are in a different ball game. As you remember growing, then my father died. And uh, by the time I was already in my 50s, my mother never made a decision without calling me. She would call me, we talk, we talk, and it's, it doesn't look like there are any decisions that disappear. Next time we are called home, and we are all told, actually what I say, but we are all told. <laughs> the others may not know. It actually came from me. That's really a wise woman, isn't it? She wants to be the one to talk. But she knows she needs to consult. Because parents, white parents, consult their adult children. White parents consult their You cannot stand there. With all that information in your family, you are still struggling on issues that your son could do. And you know, the trouble with it is you, over, over a period of time, you are the one. Like now, whenever I bought a new gadget, I'm the one who worked on it. Then they became teenagers. I said, no, no, I'll read the instruction. Then no, no, you understand that. And then I finally realized they actually can read. So when I now buy a new thing, I just say, hand it over, and they are the ones who sort it out. Now, when I'm stuck, I ask them. The ball was changing, isn't it? And reach a level where it was not just a question of changing. And the truth of the matter is, I actually need their help. The other day, we wanted to buy a car. My daughter said, don't, don't, don't bother, I'll, I'll bring it. Look at her, she's a baby the other day. But said, just all you need to give me is money. The next thing I knew, there was a car, not very really new, new, you know the new, new Mutumba? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, has a new, it has a new registration. Right in the party. Never involved me in anything, I just saw it outside the park. And I did not go to anybody, I have no idea how she did it. That's what it means to be an adult parent. Where your children sometimes know more things than you. And that recognition you must get. You will not be a wise parent when you don't know that they know something. For example, there is something you are discussing, but your child has studied psychology. Surely there is something they know that you don't know. So you must slowly, as you deal with adult children, start recognizing they are things they know better than, better than you. There are still many, many things you know better than them. But there are some things they know better than you. And any parent does not, like my mother, does not make a decision where they know the son or the daughter is likely to know information without consulting. And the word is consult. Your children should not make decisions for you. It is you to make the decision. After consulting. Because the moment the decision sounds like it's being made by son A, son B will start rioting. Am I right? So you need the wisdom of, of going to son A quietly, then come and announce like my mother <laughs> as the owner of the information. Because you are the owner, isn't it? You only consulted. You are the one who designed the system. So that, that's the... Uh, remember we are talking about dealing, how to deal with adult children, isn't it? Yeah, so you don't create a problem by picking one child and ignoring all the others and creating chaos in your family because the child picked by the father will be under attack from all the other siblings. And who is setting that fire? Yes. The father. Yes. No, let me call them by their right name. Foolish parents. Is that their right name? Foolish parents. Because see, I'm sure when they see the war, 
He got very disappointed. Why? 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 But you are the one who actually set the war, isn't it? Because of not understanding how to. So Job is saying, hey, hey, they are strong, but they don't seem to be helping me the way I would have expected them to help me. You know, Titus in chapter, in Titus chapter 2, verse 2 says, Teach the older men to be temperate, worthy of respect, self controlled, sound in faith, in love, and endurance. That means the way you relate with your adult children should be temperate. What is temperate? Even when they have done something evil, you don't rise up. Not the way you used to when you were young. You say, let me sleep over that. We shall talk about it tomorrow. That is you, you are an adult, a parent of an adult child. You are temperate. It does not mean you are not fine and tell, tell him what you think about that matter. But you don't react without thinking. Are we together? Number two, you yourself must behave worthy of respect. It is, you must ask yourself, am I behaving like a child? And therefore my children find me difficult to know how to relate with me. Or am I behaving like a mature person? Because the Bible is actually saying you must be speaking worthy of respect. That means you can be somebody not worthy of respect. If you are a parent of another child, you must know, you must ask yourself in which way am I behaving not worthy of respect. However, they are not here to hear me. But the truth is, even if you're not worthy of respect, if they don't respect you, they are in trouble. Not from you, from God. Because God did not say, honor, honor good parents. They simply say, honor. honor. Even the crooks. So it's very important to, under, to understand there is nothing you can do that will justify your children not to respect you. Because it's the, God, the Bible that requires it. But that was for them. Now, for us, the message is here. We must be worthy of respect. Worthy of respect. It's our respect. Not the us. Our. It's us to be worthy of respect. Then he goes on to say, you must be self-controlled. Self-controlled. That's why when some of the Christians are starting to take one for the road, you know they are saying now at this time, what evil can I do? I'm just, I just keep a little wine in my, in my fridge. Where is it written? You cannot touch it. No, it just says you cannot be drunk. But I'm promising you, I'll never be drunk. Which was, it is not our subject today. But that's a lie. <laughs> it's a lie because the moment you take the wine, it calms your nerves. And what you feel will force you to take a second one. By the time you take the third one, now it's not what you feel. You are out of control. I went for a course, she took me for a course on um, managing our workers, and they told us one of the things the consultant from our health organization told us we must train our workers to save from alcohol. Obviously, in, in Kenya, that's an impossible task. They said for work performance, alcohol is an enemy to work performance. So they told us we are not telling, of course, they are not Christians, we are not telling, telling people not to drink, we are only telling them the formula. Your liver has only got the capacity to clean the poison brought by alcohol of only two bottles in 24 hours. That means if you take alcohol, in 24 hours you take two bottles, it will not damage your liver because it can actually cleanse it without any problem. The moment you go to, to a large bottle, it starts eating into your liver. Not very fast, but slowly. So he told us, you cannot, you cannot take, no, no, somebody say, wait a minute, me, I don't take, uh, I don't take a beer, I take wine. Since the question is not the title of the video, <laughs> the video is something they called alcohol, alcohol, proof I think it was called, this guy can help me. <laughs> because he was in, he was in, in those areas, he knows, in hotels, so he can help me. I think it's called proof yes. And they told us, according to the calculation of a doctor, you are, you are you, two bottles of a, a, a beer are equal to one glass of wine. Are equal to one tot of whiskey. The choice is yours. 